A question I've been asked frequently at various appearances in the last two weeks is how to reconcile my vision of old age as, as basically a battle after a certain point with studies that seem to show that people grow happier as they grow older. My answer is that the media, which relentlessly promote the idea that older means happier, have left something very important out of these surveys. What they actually show is that people are happier in their 60s and early 70s that they, than they were in their 40s and 50s, and that the happiness level begins to drop again around age 80. Furthermore, some of these polls, like a much quoted Gallup poll last year, actually exclude people over 85 entirely. In other words, they don't even ask people over 85 whether they're happy or not. They exclude everyone who lives in an institution as well. And of course, they exclude everyone who suffers from dementia because no one with advanced dementia can answer a question. Uh, as people age, they can naturally expect more losses, whether from death of a spouse and friends to serious illness, over which they have no control. But Americans are told constantly that even if they can't control their objective circumstances, they can change their attitude toward what's happening. And the only acceptable change is to accentuate the positive. A classic example of positive attitude propaganda titled The Secrets of Re Resilient People appeared last year in the AARP magazine, which reaches more Americans over 50 than any print media outlet in the United States. What defines people who are success successful at handling the losses of aging, asked the magazine. They view the glass as half full, profound. They find the silver lining. They, quote, actively seek solutions, unlike those of us who presumably refuse to get out of bed in the morning. They're spiritual. They're playful. There's certainly no hope here for an atheist who looks at a cloud and sees a cloud. One of the people quoted... <laughs> One of the people quoted in this article was one Deborah Robinson, whose 57-year-old husband was diagnosed with early Alzheimer's in 2002. I want to read this to you directly. She survives the inevitable prog progress of her husband's disease and his death by, quote, reframing the situation in the most positive terms possible. She decided that we would rise above it and it would be our finest hour. The article goes on to present a formula for positive change to those whose dark view of life prevents them from thinking about Alzheimer's diagnosis as an opportunity for personal growth. Quote, experts say that negative thinking is just a bad habit, the article assured readers, though it may take some work to change your mindset. I'll say, if someone had told me that my partner's being diagnosed with Alzheimer's was an opportunity for us to have our, quote, finest hour, well, I'm not a trained boxer, but I don't know if I would have been able to control myself. I also think there's something insidious about the equation of happiness with contentment, accompanied as often as not by physical exhaustion in the old. My mom, after a knockout course of IV antibiotics to clear up an infection recently, had the temerity to complain about how tired she was to a visiting nurse. Why don't you just be good to yourself and lie in bed and all day and watch TV, dear, the nurse said. Well, as it happens, staying in bed and watching TV is not my mother's idea of a meaningful and fulfilling day. She's not contented. I admire her for that. If I'm fortunate enough to retain the powers of my mind, I hope to remain a discontented work in progress as long as I live. I've asked myself repeatedly why I feel so strongly that the myth and marketing of the new old age are harmful, not only to society, but to individuals who must live through real old age. There's an argument to be made, and many people have made it to me, that belief in agelessness, that age is just a number, is no more deleterious to adults than belief in Santa Claus is to children. To this I reply that adults are not children. The older not children, even though they're often treated as children. Hope is not incompatible with realism, but it is incompatible with the expectation that things are going to turn out well if only we conduct ourselves well. Inflated expectations about successful aging, if the body imposes a very cruel old age, can lead to real despair. I've heard genuine bitterness rather than irony in the voices of some people 
facing some new bodily catastrophe who whisper the golden years under their breath in a tone that sounds like a curse. The great French writer Colette said at 79, she died in her 80s, she said, we can never look enough, never exactly enough, never passionately enough. The myth of the new old age spreads a miasma that obscures the intensity of memory and vi vision that is the gift of sentience if one is fortunate enough to remain aware until the end. It is impossible to look enough, to look exactly enough, to look passionately enough if what you're looking at is a fantasy. On our last day together, my grandmother did not only mourn for her uselessness, this poet with only an eighth grade education also took a long last look at the river and said, it's good to know that the beauty of the world will go on without me. If I can say that in full knowledge of my own rapidly approaching extinction, I'll consider my life a success, even though I certainly will have failed as everyone ultimately does to defy old age.